All right, so let's step through another example of a hypothesis test for a mean um, and for this hypothesis test, let's just kind of do a bit of the mechanics. Um, there won't be as much context for this one, but the, the null hypothesis is that mu is taken to be some value, 21. The alternative hypothesis um, is that mu is taken to be, um, is believed to be actually less than that stated null hypothesis. And the level of significance that we're going to use is 5%. Um, and then, so the other part of this is, let's go ahead and set up our test. Looks like it's a left tail test. And so for this left tail test, where this is, 0 0.05. We need to know what the critical value is. Um, and so notice that we're given S, the sample, standard deviation. So what is that value of T that corresponds to the 5%? Okay, so we don't know what the population standard deviation is. What we have is the sample standard deviation. So instead of using this scenario where we get a z-value, since we don't have sigma, we're going to actually use a t-distribution and the sample standard deviation. Um, and so for this particular test, let's say that this was our, our, our test that was designed, and then we determined then that there were a sample of some nine individuals that we get um, a value of 23. Oops, 19 in fact. All right, so now let's take a look at this. Let's plug this in and see what we get. We get a T value of 19 minus 21 all over 4 divided by the square root of 9, which makes that 4 thirds. So we're looking at a negative 2 all over 4 thirds, which is negative 6 over 4, which is negative 1.5. Um, let's go back up and figure out then what our critical value um, is, so since we're looking at the t distribution, we have degrees of freedom equal to n minus 1, n is 9, so we have degrees of freedom equal to 8, and we have area in the 1 tail, 0 0.05. Um, so if we take a look at our um, t table, since our degrees of freedom was 8, we're going to work with this row over here. And since the area in one tail was 0 0.05, we're looking at this over here. So it looks like we're dealing with a 1.86 for our critical value. So 1.86. And we're looking at this value to the left. I'm going to call that negative since it's to the left. It's always going to be a negative value. But either way, we're looking at the magnitudes. And so our 1.5 isn't far enough into 
the critical region for us to reject the null hypothesis. So um, that's one way, before we write that up, that's one way of getting the critical value. So using the table is generally the easiest way to go. In fact, for those of you that have a TI-83, um, using the table is the only way to go. For those of you that have a TI-84, you could get the area, you could get the critical value by using inverse T, the area to the left is 0 0.05, um, and then it wants to know area to the left, and it also wants to know degrees of freedom, this function called inverse T, and degrees of freedom is 8. So let's take a look at our calculator and see if we can use that to give us the same value that we got using the table. And so let's clear that out. Go to second distribution. And so this function number four, and not every calculator, the older calculators won't have. So it's inverse t, the area to the left um, is 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 um, degrees of freedom 8 and so we get a value of negative 1.86 and so that's the value 1.86 um, is the same value that we got from the table the same magnitude so both of these ways would work generally the table is going to be easier so our test statistic is going to be compared to our critical value. If our test statistic sits over here on this side, we say that there's not enough evidence to reject. And if our test statistic goes into this area, we see that there is um, a strong enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. There is not strong enough evidence. The magnitude of our test statistic is less than the magnitude of our critical value. Um, those two values, our test statistic is negative 1.5. So the absolute value of that is 1.5. And 1.5, we're trying to see if that's less than 1.86. Um, and it is. So if this is the case where the test statistic is less than the critical value, just the magnitudes, um, then um, there's not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Also, the p-value associated with that. Um, we could find that as well. Um, but using the critical value test generally is the easiest way. So if we want to find the p-value, right, to get this a second way, then we're going to need to know the area that corresponds to um, this negative 1.5. Um, so we want to know what's the probability of getting not a t but a z. These we're no longer looking at t's. We're looking at the or z's. We're looking at the t distribution. So let's be careful with that. Um, change those now. Let's go ahead. So the p-value, right, the probability of t being that far to the left, um, right, so what's the likelihood of being that distance? So the t would actually be less than um, uh, the 
1.5 that we have here. What's the likelihood that we could be that far to the left? Um, to get this, we would use inverse t. Um, and so you go to stats, calc, um, oops, wrong. Let's go to second. Let's clear this out. Clear this out. Clear this out. And so where we're going to go is to distributions. And then whenever we're trying to find the area, it's cumulative distribution function. And so we're going to go from negative infinity up to negative 1.5 and then degrees of freedom was 8 and so we're looking at a probability of 0 0.086 So 8.6%. And since that 8.6% is not a small enough probability, there's not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So since the p-value is, um, is not less than, so I'll say if the p-value is greater than um, let's see if it's less than alpha, then that's strong enough evidence for us to reject the null hypothesis. Um, therefore, since our p-value, 8.6%, is greater than or equal to alpha, there's not enough evidence. Right? So it's going to be the same statement that we have here. There's not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And finally, if we uh, let our calculator do our work for us, we should get similar numbers. Let's go into um, stats, tests, and t-test, and the mean that we're testing against in this case was the 21. Our sample was 19. standard deviation was 4 and our sample size was 9 and it's a right-tailed uh, left-tailed test So let's make this a left tailed test. Enter. And then we're not going to draw it, so I don't care about the color. Let's just calculate based on the data that we see there 21. We're comparing our sample of 19 to the 21 and seeing how improbable it is. And it's a test, um, it's a t distribution since we're not given sigma. So we get t equals nine, one, negative 1.5 1 for the test statistic. And we get a p-value of 0 0.086. And we use these two pieces of information to make a decision. Um, the t equals negative 1.5. 
doesn't exceed the critical value. That's one um, one way of making a decision. If the decision is to look at the p-value to see if it's less than alpha, and our alpha is 0 0.05, and it's not. So um, it's the same conclusion. Not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis.